Really great chess on show. Yeah, I mean, I probably am playing better than I've played in a long time, um, and somehow it's working out. Uh, today's game against um, you, you were playing on board two against Harika, very strong Indian player, uh, rated about nearly 2500. Uh, can you tell us in the opening, did you get a slight edge according to you? Yeah, I mean, I got the type of position like I was uh, planning to get, you know. Um, so the, when the isolated pawn arose on the board, it wasn't a big surprise and I was just prepared to play that kind of position. I mean, I don't know like what it is mathematically because it probably hovers around, you know, zero. But the thing is like, I think for a human player, it's just a lot easier to play against the isolated pawn and I just tried to you know, follow some fundamental principles, trade some pieces off and, you know, um, keep black passively defending that pawn. Well, Harika herself is a very good positional yeah. player. Uh, to, to beat her in this style, must was it easy for you or were there any difficult moments? The thing is, this is also my style, <laughs> you know? So, I mean, actually, I, that's what I think. I think Harika and I have kind of similar styles. And um, so was the game difficult? I mean, well, I mean, it was definitely a game. You know, there were certain challenges um, during the game, but let's say, my round four game against Mongolia was incomparably more, you know, difficult and like a tense just because, you know, I could not just say that I had the advantage the whole game and I pressed it. Um, in this game, yeah, like I was a bit better. I never felt like there were any danger and it was just a matter of like, uh, you know, building and growing this advantage and somehow, you know, I had an advantage on the clock and I think it was just, you know, an unpleasant position for Black to play. Well, in this Rook end game that you got, uh, do you think that it's theoretically winning uh, because you get your king to d4 you have the open file yeah I thought it was winning like I thought it was just uh, a nightmare for black you know it's like it's the textbook example of like what you don't want to wind up in you know and yeah like once my king establishes itself on d4 and I have the open file and black has the weakness as a passive rook and the problem was that you know she didn't really have a way to even give away a pawn for activity right so like you know the principle of activating the rook she, she couldn't um, do that and eventually black just uh, ran out of moves when white took uh, more space. Can you tell us uh, about the US team? How is it? Because it's a mixture of uh, experience and youth. Yeah, so we got Anna and me, uh, the veterans who played you know, many, many Olympiads between us. I think I started in like 98 and uh, well, 20 years ago. <laughs> and Anna, you know, around the same time. Um, and then we have, you know, Tatev, who's also she's a board three and she's played many Olympiads for the US. Um, and our new player is Jennifer Yu. Um, it's the first time I think we have a teenager playing for the team in a while. And um, yeah, I mean, she's having a good showing and it kind of reminds me of my own first Olympiad when I also, um, I played board two for the US team and um, it was a good experience for me. I did manage to help the team and she's How old us. were you at that time? I was 14. 14? <laughs> yeah. Wow. So you started playing since 14 and Yeah, you that played? was my first Olympiad. Yeah, I, I started out on board two. And after that, I played, um, you know, mostly board one, um, and now I'm back on board two. And I guess uh, this board suits me. You know, Anna has a harder job. Sure. And how how has been uh, the chess developing in USA? You see that there are talents uh, that are coming up, but yet uh, I wouldn't say someone who's extremely strong who's come out of uh, America in women's yeah. chess, oh, particularly. In women's chess. Yes. Yeah, well, um, we definitely have a lot of up-and-coming junior players. Um, um, and, we, and the girls' chess scene is definitely getting stronger. You know, I mean, before we really pretty much had nobody for years and years, right? Um, the girls' scene is getting stronger. Um, but, you know, it depends on, you know, whether these, um, these young girls are going to stay with chess. And, you know, it helps to be homeschooled. You have to make some sacrifices, you know, along the way. Because most of the girls, you know, they're, they're very talented, but they do go to school. They do plan to go to college, and so that might um, slow them down. You, who, who do you think are the best ones right now in the in, women's oh, chess? Oh, the and girls from the young girls. Well, yeah, it's it's a uh, Carissa Yip and Jennifer and uh, Annie Wang. I would say those three are the ones that seem to be the youngest and the most um, advanced. And, and you said that not not many players were coming up, but now they are. So what has changed recently? Well, definitely the chess scene in the U.S. is much more dynamic with the advent of the St. Louis Chess Club. You know, that began about 10 years ago, and Rex um, and the club have just done so much for chess in the U.S. I mean, all kinds of tournaments. Like, they started with just the U.S. Championship, and then they brought in the Sinkfield Cup. 
Um, and then they brought in like matches. Then they brought in like round robins. You know, A and B groups and C groups maybe. You know, I am norm level tournaments. You know, um, so now there is just so much more. You know, for a chess player in the U.S. and um, you know, I think that's what is behind this boom. And and U.S. has this huge, uh, you can say people who have come here a huge group of people there are journalists there mm. are uh, support staff i yeah. mean it's it's not common yeah usually a team comes with a coach maybe a captain and it's well i mean maybe the russian team has also got yes. pretty big support staff exactly. you know i feel like they got you know you know uh, as many coaches as there are players you know and uh, they and maybe they have a masseuse or something i don't know but um uh, you know, the U.S., yeah, we, we've got some journalists, but they're independent. You know, it's not like they're really, they're not like officially part of the team. So they're just, you know, covering the event for Chess Life Online, um, for the magazine, for chess.com. And, and, you know, they tend to kind of embed themselves into our team, right? Because it's yes. like we're from the same country, but, but they are, you know, still um, independent. And Irina, are you a professional player still or do you do something else apart from playing? Yeah, um, I'm not a professional player anymore, um, professional amateur player. <laughs> and um, about, I made that switch about three years ago um, to, to teaching. You know, I have my own um, chess teaching company. Okay. You know, I do lessons. What's it called? GM Chess. Yes. Um, you know, we do camps for kids, after school uh, classes, things like that. So that keeps me busy in New York. Um, but I do. Uh, I do really love to play, so you know when I sit down, I still feel like a chess player. Wonderful. And final question: We've been asking this to everyone, uh, also to you. Uh, what has been the impact of, let's say, chess-based website, chess-based softwares, and chess-based mm. in general in your chess career? Oh, chess-based is huge, right? I mean, even now, like now that I'm doing a lot of teaching, I've like sent so many of my students to get chess-based. Just because I feel like, you know, even if you're 1600 and you want to become serious about chess and you want to improve, you know, you gotta you gotta have this program. So um, it's it's a must for everybody. Thank you so much, uh, Irina, and we wish you good luck and you keep winning games. Thank you. Thank you.